Trading card has been one of my primary hobby when it comes to gaming. Currently on Kickstarter, Alter TCG has been showing its massive success so far. I have played about a dozen games online and was lucky enough to attend locally held roadshow event with my daughter. Here's my first impression. Let's get started. Alter TCG is a player versus player physical trading card game with a big asterisk next to the physical, which I will come back later. The game is built by French indie company Equinox as their first and currently only project, original IP. The game has been in development for the last three years and currently the team consists 30 enthusiasts based in Paris. Being TCG, the game will start with a core set with offering of 6 starter decks and booster packs. The plan is to have the game's official launch on August 26, 2024. This is a date they plan to hit retail. The first expansion is planned on January 2025. After that, they plan to release new expansion every 4 months. Although it has not been finalized, the developer states set rotations in this game is very probable. Currently, the game is on Kickstarter and has already raised over 3 million US dollars. This puts the game the second most funded TCG in Kickstarter history. If the new TCG's art style and the world setting do not fit my personal taste, I can't play those games. Now, these are very subjective, so you know if this game is for you or not. For the art style in an altered, the developer states the game is influenced by Miyazaki's work. The style should have wide audience support. When it comes to the game's world setting, I'm not a big lore leader, but I prefer their existence. Usually, what I look is simply what genre so that I know what is possible and what isn't. For example, if something taking place in a sci-fi world setting, the fantasy element in the game will be limited or non-existent. Since I prefer fantasy setting, those games won't be my go-to one. As you can quickly see from the arts in Altered, this game has more fantasy worlds feel. What's interesting here is their core world setting. If I were to summarize the world setting that relevant to me in one sentence, in Altered, there was a reality and imaginary world collision event that allowed those lives in the world to be able to summon imaginary world creatures. This summary may be doing a disservice to the game as it sounds a cheap plot. But what's intriguing here is this setting makes anything is possible in the world of Altered. From cars that's been revealed already, we can see Dragon, Japanese famous Yokai Kappa, Dorothy from the classic child novel Wizard of Oz. We even have historical figures such as Amelia Earhart. The game can take anything without breaking the world setting. The game can do a crossover with any other IP in the future as a potential. We can hope for your famous historic person or novel book character to be on the game someday as well. Another noteworthy thing about Altered World setting is that the game's theme is exploring the world and not fighting or war. So despite being a competitive game, there is no violence in the game. This is certainly one of the more family-friendly competitive TCG. I personally divide full category or motivation of players why they join TCG. Collector, casual player, competitive player, and investor. They are not mutually exclusive. Some may convert from one to the other, such as started out as a casual player and becomes competitive player. Others may have multiple reasons equally important, such as being a collector, while truly enjoy casual play. Each reasons and hence player audience are important for TCG's success and the longevity. Because in the end, everybody wants to have a game last long with constant new game content and hoping our assets retain some value, as otherwise, they can be really expensive hobby or money sink. 
Personally, I'm a casual player with collector mentality, with some interest in competitive play. So let's take a look at Alter TCG from each perspective. There are various degree of collectors for those who want to collect own set rule cards, such as all the heroes, all the same factions, or those who want everything for number of copies needed for the playset, and perhaps additional copies for collection purpose, including all promos. Then of course, there are those in between. Altered have very unique feature, print on demand service, that can make this as Corrector's dream game, and depending on its success, this may set a whole new standard in the world of TCG. In Altered, every card produced other than tokens comes with unique QR code. We scan these QR code and they get added to our official digital collection library. Any card we own digitally can be requested for print on demand, and we can get official card printed and shipped to us. There are many advantages with this from collector's perspective. Print on demand offers brand new physical card access anytime. So even an OCD collector should be able to shuffle and bend their physical card collections. This would also eliminate the need for collecting play and separate collection set for those who had been doing such. It also makes card grading irrelevant. Even though there are online TCG market sites, such as TCG Player, eBay, there are always the risk of the card quality you receive, and you have to know how to identify counterfeit just in case. When it comes to trading cards, I feel like the excitement of real card trade has been long lost for me. Not just because I can now buy them, but it's more like I don't have any person to trade with. This is because I don't go to local game shop frequent enough, and the TCG I play are not necessarily the most supported in my local game shop. Trading online with someone I do not know has always a risk of getting scammed. Altered will have official marketplace with fees, and it also allows fearless trading, and even planned auction and card rental services. With this digital age, Altered is really opening up the potential for biggest official card trading environment for everyone in the world. As a non-native English speaker, I've been through a process of purchasing an English version and hoping to see Japanese support someday. Some games get big enough and receive Japanese localization. However, from the collector's perspective, it doesn't provide me any head start by owning English version because I have to still get Japanese version if I want them in that language by paying full price. With Altered, they are releasing in English and French at the launch, but if additional language be added in the future, we can use print-on-demand service to request any of the language available at that time. In another word, the English card I would own in my digital account will be good to get me Japanese card as soon as they become available. As a part of game's digital technology integration, Altered use computer algorithms to generate specific reality cards called unique. They are truly unique and exist only one in a world. At first, from the collector's perspective, this is a nightmare because nobody can own every unique type of unique card. However, once you accept that fact, there is no problem because the same character's unique cards have the same arts for the same card. I call myself casual collector, where I usually like to own non-promo playset of all the cards in a given TCG, and like to keep those cards in mint condition, and looking for future Japanese language version support. I find Altered TCG's print and demand system as the dreams come true. My definition of a casual player are pretty wide range. For example, it can be just those who likes to play the game every once in a while with friends and family. Those who likes to attend local game shop hosted event regularly for prizes. Basically anyone whose primary purpose of play is not to win high stake prize tournaments, so called pro players, are I consider casual players. 
When playing amongst family or friends, it is totally possible to use a proxy, and it will still be cheaper. I think many of us prefer playing on the official high quality card. In other TCGs, to play mirror match, we need to own two sets of cards. This may be fine for cheap common cards, but when it comes to higher loyalty, more expensive cards, it's often cost prohibitive. With Altered, once we have at least one copy of the card we want, we can request our custom cards or deck printed by Cardamundi Belgium and ship to us. For those who worry about the printer clarity, Cardamundi is a company printing the TCGs like Magic the Garing and Flesh and Blood. In another word, it is easier than ever to have the multiple copies of official high quality physical cards to play in person. Digital card games are a very popular genre of its own. It is not infrequent for high quality Kickstarter campaign projects, either TCG or board games to have tabletop simulator demo to show what the game is all about. It's certainly a great way to see if the game is really for me. But beyond the benefit of an actual game trial, I see it as companies' confidence and readiness on their product. Altered have not one, but three tabletop simulator versions created by fans. But what's more impressive is they actually have board game arena version free to play, at least until end of the Kickstarter campaign. Unlike tabletop simulator, board game arena is fully automated browser platform. Those who have ever played Talisher on Flesh and Blood, from the gameplay perspective, I think it matches that quality. Even if Board Game Arena Digital Play were temporarily, there is already local client app, X Altered, developed by one of the fan. It's also automated. If you've ever played Magic Arena, from just playing game perspective, it's similar to that. Basically, for casual players who want to play Alter digitally, I think this game is way ahead of many other new TCGs. And I'm fairly confident we will continue to see a support, at least on fan made systems like X Alter in the future. Simple yet deeply tactical statement sounds ubiquitous for many new TCGs coming to market nowadays and feels no real meaning to it anymore. But in reality, TCG game design seems to exist in spectrum. One end is simple, fast-paced, anyone can learn and play. The other end is highly tactical with many player choices. This is no right or wrong answer here. It really comes down to individual preference, but usually choosing one end results in sacrificing the other. Simple, fast gameplay may be too simple for those who are looking for skill-based, your choice matters deep tactical games. On the other hand, highly tactical game may have too complicated game mechanics and rules, and some may call playing with rule element. If you didn't know specific rule, it cost you the game. Since most new TCGs don't pick one extreme and instead trying to find their own definition of a happy medium, it becomes somewhere in between. Description. Basically, which way is a game weighted towards? I enjoy looking at new TCG from design standard point of view. Two core elements I look immediately on new TCG are resource system and turn system. These two aspects of core game design allow me to gauge which way the designer is weighting their game towards. Is it more towards simplicity over deep tactics? Or is it the other way around? My personal preference is deep tactics side. If you like game like Magic the Gathering, Flesh and Blood, you are on the deep tactics side. If you prefer something like Hearthstone, you are on simplicity side. Again, there is no right or wrong. It's purely subjective preference here. So where does the altar lie? Let's look at it from individual game design decisions. From simple to more complex, I categorize resource system into four major types. No resource system, automatic resource system, 
sacrificial, and dedicated card-based resource systems. The latter two offers resource management opportunity to players. Since dedicated card resource system, as used in Magic, has infamous mana screw, new TCG that tries to incorporate resource management within the game must come up with some type of solution or alleviating system. Sacrificial system is a classic way of doing so. You use your card to build resource pool, but it does not matter which card. Every card can be used for mana. This is what Alter uses. It gives general resource management feel and tactical choice moments. The downside to me is it takes away the dedicated card game mechanics built for resource system. One of my favorite resource systems is from the digital TCG called Carte TCG, where they use sacrificial resource system, yet they also had a dedicated resource type cards on top. Putting those cards into resource rather than non-resource card offers some extra advantage. In case of Carte Basics resource card, you get to draw replace the cards. In Flesh and Blood, cards have different resource points. Some may create just one, but the other, three. They also have a few, but dedicated resource system type cards. From the cards that have been revealed so far in Unaltered, I have not seen any special resource cards, so we may never see one. But looking at how wide the resource zone on physical playmat, I wonder, and perhaps I hope, they consider expanding the game design here in the future. Turn system is one of the core elements of the game design that defines how simple as well as how interactive the game is. In general, I divide turn system on TCG into two types. Strictly turn-based system, dynamic interactive system. In the strictly turn-based system, each player takes their own turn at a time and there's no interruption during their turn by opponent. In contrast, dynamic interactive system games have instant type cards that allow the other player to interact or play cards outside of their turn. I really like dynamic interactive system as the system creates the moment of surprise via counterplays. However, the main trade-off on the system is knowing the timing of when you can actually use those counters, or specifically, card resolution timings. Despite playing the same card or card effect in the same sequences, depending on what timing you use, the end result can be different in these system. This is what I call play with rule moment rather than play with skill moment. Though some may argue knowing the rule in depth is a part of a skill, I just feel like it's a bit too much for me to learn that deep as a casual player. Altered uses what I call simultaneous turn system, which is essentially a form of a strictly turn-based system. You can only play one card at a time during the car game's main round phase. Once you play a card, your opponents get to play their card, and you gain the priority back after that. From the gameplay perspective, this is one of the main strengths of the Altered TCG. First, despite it is a strictly turn-based system variant, this system still offers counterplay feel. You see your opponent's move and get to respond that immediately. In fact, you don't have to have a special instant type card to play it. It's just part of the core game rule. In addition, the game rule states if you decide to pass your priority by not playing any card in your turn, you have forfeited all actions during that remaining turn. Also, the game asks dichotomy of which zone you would play the character card. Together, this game offers highly interactive tactical game experience. For instance, playing a card can be for setting up of my next own action, or it could be bait or bluff. The order of cards you play is now important part of a choice. Since the game rule is as straightforward as play one card, then opponent gets their turn, there is no play with rule complexity. Every card you play gets resolved at least for the moment you play. 
You can still get the card you just played removed from the board by your opponent's next move, as in the classic counterplay. But this is not before that card resolves nonsense. What's impressed me with Alter Turn system is how well the game gives us the true combo feel. Since every card resolves and can only take incremental one step at a time, I had thought making the game changer synergy in this system is impossible. Because if one step is so big, it changes the whole game balance. However, in the Alter, each round is concluded by deciding which hero or companion piece gets to progress to next field slot. So there is defined final outcome. I can place a single one cost character on the correct side of the board and may get one slot move in the end of the round. My opponent can perform a combo round with buffing all one 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 character and tokens to suddenly make it to unseen 10 10 10. In the end, they may end up moving also one slot. The next round starts fresh. So these massive combo moves do not break the game balance, yet we don't feel like always playing just one by one stat difference card. It's hard to put into the words, but this feels truly the best turn system implementation on TCG I've played at least on my first impression level. Another point of altered gameplay I admire is the game's tempo. Normally simple game goes faster, but then it feels like lacking the depth. On the other hand, deep, more tactical game often lasts longer and sometimes I'm just not ready for that time commitment. Altered gameplay says it lasts 15 to 30 minutes, and I think this is fairly accurate. Even my first play while trying to read cards and figuring out how it plays on the board game arena lasted about this long. Teaching and playing the physical game with my 11 year olds who plays the game for the first time also lasted about this. However, the key is it's not just fast paced games. The designer here seems to cut down on the pieces where time can be saved and really focus on the playing game. Simultaneous turn system without each player keeping saying pass is one way to save the time. Another element of the game design is that this game does not offer mulligan, but draws six cards while initial mana setting will start with choosing three of those rather than one at a time. So they took out ramping phase on many other TCGs. For winning, you need to move at least seven total slots. This felt a very small health life total equivalent in the other combat games. In fact, on my very first game, I thought this would be too quick, too simple. But I changed my mind after the very first game. Only 7 slots makes every single move valuable. With all these together, despite the game goes quickly, I feel like I am playing the focused game entire time. So that 15 to 30 minutes spent in this game feels analogous to other games full 30 to 60 minutes play. The Altered Official app will handle all required elements of organized play. The developer have even mentioned they plan to host major events, including the World Tournament. The game's design is skill over the lock. While it is really easy to learn and play, there are many decision points within the game. Where do you place your character? Do you try to play aggressively so you can move your hero or companion to the next spot? Do you rather take a control role and attempt to stop from your opponent moving this turn? We have to make a decision every time we place a character on the expedition zone. By default, a card played from the hand goes to reserve zone, which acts as extended hand. We have to think not just playing for this round, but for the next and beyond. To avoid exhausting hands in mid to late game, the game also offers draw two at the beginning of the round rather than one. So beginning of the every round, we have decision to make which cards to play during the turn and never it's just simple as play or not play a single drawn card from the round. This is really important for TCG to be successful in competitive scene. 
Pro players prefer consistency and skill-driven game, so their skill will be rewarded. Competitive play scene is important not just for those who aim to win prizes, but even for casual players. This is because when there is a good healthy competitive scene with meta, casual players can learn from them and attend and watch organized events with those fine-tuned decks. As part of this, playstyle variance is extremely important. If it's always the same deck that sits on the top as the best deck to play, the TCG loses a key attraction, the playstyle variance. As a result, many of us will lose our interest. After playing each starter decks, I can say you don't even have to know about TCG's archetypes. You can just feel it from the start. Aggro, combo, control, ramp, all are there in Alter TCG. The proper balancing of the cards is extremely important, especially in the competitive games. This is technically yet to be determined. It's absolutely important. Seeing the company having 30 employees, how successful the Kickstarter is, and the company's plan to support organized play, I think it's fair to assume the game will be nicely balanced. Also, the game uses card pool isolation system, which means in construct decks, you can only have the cards from the same faction. This allows balancing cards by developer easier and also offers them to push the limit further without worrying about creating degenerative combo. If for nothing else, Alter the print on demand service make errata on card easier than ever, so they can technically always try to balance cards from this way. When it comes to competitive play, not all decks are innovative. In fact, in many cases, majority of decks are identical. This still can create fun competitive environment so long as it's not just one or two decks completely dominating the meta. However, Alter looks to try something new here. With the unique card system, we expect each deck to have one-of-a-kind cards in their deck. Specifically, they can have three of them per roll. Developers have said they will ensure to put algorithm so none of these will be balance breaking. However, with these cards, there is always some surprise element as the player and also spectators. In fact, I can imagine if the developer can pull right balance on these unique cards, top players would adjust their remaining deck content to keep coherence with those three unique cards. As a result, we could see one of a kind competitive TCG scene. Clearly, one main factor for pro player attraction to the game is prize pool. This is yet to be determined and entirely depends on how much the company is willing to put emphasis into this. The massive Kickstarter campaign success makes hopeful, but only the time will tell. Despite the core business model decision look to support true next generation TCG by integration of digital technology in physical TCG, currently there is no official support plan for digital platform play. So there is no announcement regarding the support of digital platform organized play. So if you are looking for competitive digital TCG, Altered may someday be one, but there is no guarantee. And certainly as of today, the game is only to be played physically for official organized play purpose. Although I know there are many people who hate TCG investors who feel like raising the market price. I think in reality, they contribute significantly to make the TCG card have monetary value. We all know TCG cards are nothing but cardboards, and their material value is essentially non-existent. They get their value because someone is willing to pay money for it. With print-on-demand, the value of an altered TCG card will be on their digital data. Some may be thinking they could own digital and print physical cards and sell to make money. I highly doubt this will work beyond exclusives. Since print-on-demand allow as many copy as possible printing, if there is enough value, people will just start printing and sell on eBay. That will quickly devalue them. But in reality, using print-on-demand will have printing and shipping fees, so I think most will just come from original booster pack pulled extra copies. In fact, once you have three copies, which is placed at number, 
there isn't any reason for those players to have more copies unless they have immediate need for extra physical copy. I believe we will see bulk of complete set physical cards be on eBay for fairly cheap prices. Some may wonder what about unique card? If there is a handful type of unique card that stands out for being really powerful compared to the other unique cards, I think that means Equinox have failed on their algorithms. Since you can't play these cards on official events unless you own digital copy, I can't think much reason for most players wanting to pay anything for these to just play with friends or family. So why exclusive are so special? There are two reasons. One is company's decision of print on demand limit. So they can only print once per year for these. So this will be truly limit number of cars to print. But in addition, there are just alternative art version. So to my understanding, as long as you own regular version, you can actually play these on official tournament as long as you own the digital version of the regular card. Then, from the collector's perspective, while unique cards share the same arts, these exclusives have their own distinct art, so it certainly touches collector's addiction. What about foil? Altered have interesting approach to their foil cards. Unlike other TCG, we won't open foil card in our booster packs. Instead, you get foil token based on the card quality. You can then decide on digital app which card to unlock foil version. This right to foil itself can be traded on official app. So if anyone who wants to have a foil of a specific card, I think they might as well just get that and unlock own. Otherwise, if foil physical card sells for decent value, why not others start making one and undercut it? Again, this will quickly devalue the cars. When it comes to Kickstarter investment value, I have not done value analysis on each pledge tiers myself on this game. But if there is a special value, for the reasons I've described, my guess is primarily lies on the chance of getting promo and alternate arts. It's true, these Kickstarter cards are essentially first edition and comes with their own logo to indicate such. However, again, print on demand make this less valuable from physical play aspect. While they have value on digital play, as we've already seen on other digital TCGs, there is no wording if altered to be supported digital play officially, so currently it really has no value there either. If that happens, and Alter gains enough player basis, I think first edition cards may gain some value. And chance of that happening is more likely than that, considering the core design of the game and what already available on Board Game Arena and app like X Altered, but we can only hope. In general, my uneducated guess for Altered card value, even digital asset, will be less than other TCGs per card basis. This is great for players and even collectors. This means game is more affordable, but I think it is less attractive to investors. In conclusion, even though it's a, such a common catchphrase for new TCG, I think Altered truly deserves the phrase of simple yet deeply tactical TCG. The game is really simple to learn and play. It offers mastery level of tempo. Yet the game still offers constant, many tactical decision points to players, as in other skill-driven TCGs. From character and casual player perspective, this game is very promising. Print-on-demand system could potentially eliminate TCG equal pay-to-win or expensive hobby. Personally, if there is a game that allows playing physically and digitally and share two platform assets, I think that would be my true dream TCG, and something I had been waiting for ever since I played the game called Eye of Judgment by Sony a long time ago. Alter TCG looks so close, but unfortunately missing the last piece of official digital play support. But this is clearly just my personal feel, and many of you may not even care about this. Overall, 
I'd recommend Alto TCG to everyone who are looking for new TCG. Independent of if you back the game or not, I think most of you would have fun, and some may find this is their dream TCG. Thanks for watching.